of given liberty and the right to engage in a free enterprise system. A system that through hard work, innovation, and integrity has made America prosperous and secure. We are gathered here tonight to listen to a man whose life embodies these ideals. Herman Cain has been a hard-working, innovative problem solver his entire life. He put himself through college by analyzing ballistics for the U.S. Navy. He transformed Burger King by working, beginning with flipping burgers, to managing hundreds of restaurants. He led thousands of employees nationwide as CEO of Godfather's Pizza. He chaired the governing board of the Federal Reserve Bank in Kansas City, presided over the National Restaurant Association in Washington, D.C., and founded his own talk radio show. In 1994, he worked with Congress to create business-friendly tax policies. Here, the late Jack Kemp described Kane as having the voice of Othello, the looks of a football player, the English of Oxfordian quality, and the courage of a lion. I think these accomplishments are the result of something fundamental to his character. I first met him before he was running for president. He not only took time to be interviewed for my radio program, 20-year-old's podcast, but everything from his posture to his answers communicated character, humility, and thoughtful insight. Herman Cain has lived life with purpose. A Baptist minister, Cain has described himself as a CEO of self, held responsible for living life virtuously. His success demonstrates the classical truth taught here at Hillsdale, that we are free and empowered by holding to principle in our own lives. Justice holding nationally the principles of liberty and free enterprise at home will keep us prosperous and strong, an exceptional force for good in the world. As a nation, we cannot afford the alternative. We need a president who embodies principle of policy and principle of character. On behalf of Scythe and the College Republicans, we are honored to present, please welcome, candidate for the President of the United States of America, Herman King. It's not my first time here at Hillsdale, and it will not be my last time here at Hillsdale, but thank you for being here tonight. Life can be a challenge. Life can seem impossible. It's never easy when there's so much on the line. But you can make a difference. There's a mission just for you. Just look inside and you will find just what you can do. Just look inside and you will find just what you can do. It raises the question, what can the United States of America do as it relates to peace in the world? I happen to believe that national security and foreign policy are inseparable in terms of what we need to do to play our role, not as policemen for the world, but as the leader in peace for the world. I happen to believe also that national security is the commander in chiefs, the president of the United States' number one responsibility, which is to protect its citizens and its children. Because without a strong national security effort, Foreign policy would be too foreign. My foreign policy national security philosophy 
is in fact an extension of the Reagan philosophy. Because the world is a lot different today than it was then. President Reagan's foreign policy philosophy was peace through strength. And the foreign policy philosophy for the Kane administration would be peace through strength and clarity. The world is a lot different. Things are a lot more confused. Things are a lot more uncertain. But in that philosophical statement, we find our strategy, our mission, our strategy, as well as our tactics. That's that businessman background coming out in me. I like to boil things down to, but what are we trying to do? What's your objective? And in business, like in any successful venture, once you know what it is that you want to try to achieve, how do you achieve it? Strategy. And then what are the tactics, the individual steps that you need to employ? Our objective is real simple, peace. We've always been about peace. But the question is, how do we maintain peace in the world? And if you look out, look throughout the history of this great nation, this great nation has had its ups and downs, both domestically as well as in the world. But if you look at our history and identify how we have maintained peace in parts of the world, you'll find that there are some common characteristics and it starts with strength. Military strength, economic strength, and moral strength. Because if we are not strong militarily, and if we are not strong economically, and if we are not strong morally according to those founding principles that were envisioned by the founding fathers, we do not have strength. Peace through strength. In mathematics, there's something called the null hypothesis. I'm not going to put anybody on the spot and ask you to raise your hand, see if you remember the null hypothesis. But in mathematics, X implies Y, the corollary says, not Y implies not X. Therefore, no strength, no peace. No strength, no peace. Militarily, I happen to believe that we have allowed our military to get too weak. We've got the lowest number of U.S. ships active in the United States today since 1915, since before World War I. That's not strength. The world is not safer. One of the things that I believe that we need to do, which I will do as president, is to increase the number of active ships, especially our ballistic missile defense ballistic missile detection capable ships, double the number from two dozen to four dozen. Why? It'll give us the opportunity to deploy them strategically around the world, not only to help defend ourselves and our shores, but to help defend our friends. So rather than the current philosophy of cut, 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 I believe that our priority should be invest, invest, invest. Not frivolously, but based upon re-evaluating our military priorities. I happen to believe that the solution to any problem starts with working on the right problem, assigning the right priority. 
Surround yourself with good people. We've got some of the best military minds in the world, some of the best military leaders in the world. A good leader would listen to them. That's what I would do. Listen to the commanders on the ground and listen to the experts. Setting those priorities and reevaluating the current priorities in our Department of Defense. Peace through strength, military strength, economic strength. The United States currently has one fourth of the world's GDP. But yet, population wise, on a planet with approximately 7 billion people, we only have 4.5% of the world's population. Think about it. How can that be? A minuscule percentage of the population, but yet 25% of the world's GDP it goes back to the founding fathers and the principles of liberty and the free market system. That's why the United States of America is an exceptional nation, economically and militarily. That's why. That's what makes us exceptional. We have done so much with so little. Why? Because our liberties and entrepreneurship allows entrepreneurs to thrive. They are not suppressed. They're allowed to thrive. In Tunisia, at the beginning of the Arab Spring, a street vendor was denied his right to be an entrepreneur in the streets, was intimidated by the local authorities and eventually he was so depressed, disgusted, after they took his business, that little cart, took it away from him. They not only took away his livelihood with that little street cart, they took away his dignity. Protest. He set himself a fire, which was a catalyst for a lot of the things that have happened in that part of the world called the Arab Spring. Because we are the largest economy in the world, we have an obligation to be a growing economy in the world. And unfortunately, right now, our economy is on life support. And it doesn't have to be. We have the infrastructure. We have the ingredients. Businessmen and businesswomen tell me all the time, I've got cash to grow. I'm ready to grow. If you just get government out of the way and allow some fuel to be put into that economic engine called the business sector so this economy can grow at five or six percent per year. Instead of this anemic, one, one and a half percent. 